Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melanie and this is Our Budget Life. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you'll consider clicking that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you never miss any of my videos. As always, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. Now I have here my Erin Condren monthly planner. It is the eight and a half by 11. It is the larger size. And this is the planner that I use for our personal finances. So it is my personal budget planner for the family. So I am getting ready to set up the budget for the month of April. So if you wanna see what the month of April is going to look like for us, make sure you stay tuned. <music> So as I said, we are going to set up the month of April. Um, so here is the monthly view. So if you've seen my videos before, you know, in the monthly view, I do put down all of the bill due stickers. And then throughout the month, I will go in and add in our expense stickers. So that's what I'm going to start with. Now for the April budget, I pulled these stickers. These stickers are available in my Etsy shop. Um, they are also available as a subscription, a monthly subscription, if you are interested in making sure that you get your budget sticker kits every single month. There is a subscription that you can sign up. Uh, the link will be in the description box if you're interested. And you can cancel anytime. Um, but I think the subscription is really good. You do get a few extra goodies with the subscription that you wouldn't get if you ordered in my Etsy shop. Um, plus it is automatically free shipping and it is discounted from the Etsy shop. So you do get quite a bit of benefits from it by subscribing. So I highly recommend subscribing using the link in the description box if you're interested. Anyways, for the April budget, I'm going to be using this sheet. This is the variable budget sheet where it has variable expenses and fixed expenses separate. This is the thin washi strips that are included. And I brought the three patterns of thick washi strips. So this is pattern A. This is pattern B. And this is pattern C. And then this is one of the goodies that you get when you get the subscription is coordinating colored April bill due stickers. So whenever you do subscribe, whatever month it is, I do send coordinating color um, bill due stickers to go with the entire kit. I know a lot of people really want their kits to coordinate. So. I'm actually going to start with this sheet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the month of March. I'm going to copy down all the bills onto these stickers and then we will come back and I will put them down on this calendar. All right, so I'll be right back. All right, so I have gone ahead and written down all of the bills that we have for the month of April. Usually I do have a few extra stickers left, but April is a three payday month. That means that with every payday, I have a vehicle payment to do. Both my van and my husband's car are paid every time we get paid. So that means there's two extra bills this month. So that's why all of the stickers are taken up. And while I'm talking about payday, let me see if I have my payday stickers in here. I don't see them. I think they're hiding at the back. Hold on. Yeah, right here. I have all these extra stickers here. Okay, so I have my payday stickers. So let me just put these down. So I will get paid on the first, which is amazing, on the 15th, and then again on the 29th. So that's going to be awesome. It's going to help out a lot. Now let's look at the bills we have. So on the first, we do have rent and utilities due. Now April is the month that we also pay our water bills, so we do have to add that. And then we have one of our Amazon bills are due. 
So there we go. Then of course we have the van payment and I'm not going to have room. Maybe if I move the payday sticker, move this over to, let's put it this way. We'll do that. And then I'm going to put car payment. So that is a lot coming out on one day. All right. So we have all of that. Now we have our Disney Plus that comes out on the 6th. So I'll put this down. We have Netflix. So this Netflix is my mom's uh, account that comes out on the 12th. We have Crave that comes out on the 13th. And Microsoft. Oh, the 15th is going to be a busy, busy day. I'm going to have to move this payday sticker again. So let me just lift this up. So now when I write these down, I've been writing down the number as well so that I know what day it is, which will come in handy since I think I might have to jump into the 8th here to make sure everything fits. All right, so the 15th, I have Microsoft to do. We have our home insurance is due that day. We will have our RESPs, which are Registered Educational Savings Plan, so our children can try to go to university without student loans. And then we will have another van payment because it's payday, and another car payment because it's payday. So there we go. So we have all of those on the 15th. So these are going to end up being really busy payday times, a lot of bills. All right, next we have on the 16th, we have our next Amazon bill. And then we have my husband's car insurance. Then we jump to the 22nd where we have our own Netflix bill due. So I'll put this down here. And then we jump again to the 28th. And of course it's on the coil. Let's do, try to make this work. So this is one of the Amazon bills. And we have uh, my van insurance is due that day as well. And then we have on payday, we have our van payment and car payment. And on the 30th, the last day of the month, we have our final Amazon bill due. Now, the last four you see here are for internet, cell phones, dance, and gymnastics. Um, these don't have actual set dates. I pay these throughout the month. So um, what, whenever it fits best throughout the month is when I pay it. Um, so what I do is I just put them here off to the side. And then once I pay them and I do my weekly check-ins, I can just come back and check them off that they have been paid. And I want to make sure I'm trying to put this down straight. Come on. So we have those. Then we have now dance for my oldest daughter. She is a competitive dancer. Dance is going back to in-person dancing uh, in about a week, which is so exciting. I'm so excited to have her dancing in person again. Um, I did sign her up for some semi-private lessons, which is not reflected in the budget right now, just because I'm still waiting for confirmation that there is enough room in the schedule. Once I do have confirmation, then I can definitely add that to my budget. All right, so this is all of the bills that we will be paying in April, and it looks like a ridiculous amount, but we make it happen. All right, now the important part, setting up the actual budget. So if you've watched my other budget videos, you know that I have absolutely no use for this page when it comes to my budget planner. I do like to use it in my life planner when I want to add 
birthdays and memories and goals and that kind of thing, but in my budget planner, I don't have a use for it. I find it just interrupts the flow of my budget. So here's what we're doing. And it's gone. All right. Now I feel better. So on this page is where I put my budget for the month, the monthly budget, and on this page is where I will put my weekly check-in. So let's go ahead and set up the budget. Now I have my budget sheet here, and I think, which washi do I want to use? So these are the thin washies, but which pattern? You know what, I think I might start with this one. We'll see, we'll start with this one. All right, so I'm gonna take this and just lay it down at the top of my page. Now, some of you have asked why I use this particular budget with the variable expenses separated from the fixed expenses. Um, I guess it's up to personal preference, right? However you prefer to set up your budget. However, for me, not only is it a preference, but also if you saw the amount of bills I have, um, it would require a lot of room on the page itself to make sure that everything fits. So to make sure I have enough room, instead of writing everything in one line, I rather have two separate columns. So that's why I ended up deciding to split it up. And I find ever since I did that, I have so much more room and it has been so much, I wanna say cleaner, just more organized. So it's easy to see. All right, so before I put this strip, I know I have my two pays, my husband's two pays, Etsy and other. So I need to put this next strip. Oh, I just lost my place. Two pays, husband's two pays, Etsy and other. So right there. So I put this one right here. So my husband and I are both full-time high school teachers. Um, but we also both have a part-time job and I feel like I'm not putting these down properly. Hold on. I need to offset it just a little bit. That's why. Because it was going into the coil there and this sheet got cut really crooked. Is it just me or is it, it is really, really crooked. Well, good thing it's my sheet and it's not someone else's sheet. <laughs> I really try to make sure when I sell these sheets to my customers that they are properly cut. There's no way I would ever sell something like this to someone all slanted like that. That's just not cool. All right, let me add this decorative strip right in the middle here just to break it up between the expenses and the income. We will put the expenses strip down. So we have this one for fixed expenses. I always put the fixed expenses on the right side on the coil because I find I have less work to do with those since they are generally fixed. The amounts don't usually change. So that's why I like putting them there. And then variable on the left side. Now I am going to go down to the very bottom of my planner and put this sheet down. And then I will use this other decorative washi strip here and put this right here. Again, just to break it up a little bit between the sections. And then we will put our totals strips here. So put the total fixed. If I can see the line properly. Nope, I'm having a hard time here. Okay, I'm not left-handed. Let's try this. Okay, and then we'll put the total variables right over here. 
All right, so now the entire sheet has all of the sections, which is awesome. Okay, now I have my ruler. I'm just going to add a few lines just to kind of divide everything. Again, keeping it neat and organized. I find if you can see everything clearly, it's easier to track everything. All right, let me just go ahead now and add the main line here between fixed and variable all the way through. And then we'll do this line here. And these lines. So this one I will most likely just jump the sticker at the bottom just to separate it like that. And actual and budgeted. I'm super excited to start this next month. I think having a three payday month is going to be super helpful. All right, let me get my calculator. Make sure I have this ready. I'll put it off to the side. Let me zoom you in a little so you can see a bit better. All right, so when it comes to our paydays for the month, I know I have two pay. So I have my main job, which is teaching in high school. And then I have my part-time job. And then the same thing with my husband. He has his teaching job and his part-time job. Then I have Etsy, which I have been paying myself from my shop. And then I have Other. And Other has been mainly the money that my mom gives me for her her Netflix and my dad's cell phone bill. All right, now, my pay. I usually like to budget approximately $1,900 per pay. And I did say there are three paychecks this month, so I'm going to go times three. So that's $5,700. So I'm going to put 5700 Now, my other part-time job does not pay per week. It's just monthly. So I'm going to put five fifty. My husband, we budget fifteen hundred per pay again times three, so we're looking at four thousand five hundred. And his part time is approximately seven fifty. Now Etsy, I still haven't been paying myself from my shop enough to have a good average, so I'm just going to. Uh, give myself a very conservative number at $200. And then the money my mom gives me is $60 and that's it. So let's go ahead and add this up. All right, so the total is $11,760, which is our estimated income for the month of April. Yes, it sounds like a lot, but I also do have double bills now this month. So it, it disappears as fast as it comes in. All right, now let's go through our fixed expenses. I do have a list next to me because I wanted to make sure I had all of the accurate numbers. So we have rent, which always stays the same, is $1,750. We have heat which I usually budget approximately $125 and hydro, which is our electricity that I also budget approximately $125. Since I don't have the accurate numbers yet, um, usually I get them from my landlady, but she hasn't sent them yet. That's why I'm putting the general numbers for now. Once I get the accurate numbers and it's been paid, I will come in and make the changes. Now I did mention that April is, um, the month where we have to pay our water bills. So I will budget $220 there. All right, then we have our van payments. Now, keeping in mind, I usually pay $267.55 per payment 
three payments again this month, so times three. So that is 802.65. And then for the car payments, my husband usually pays 180.14. And then times three for three payments. So we are looking at 540. 42. So you see how things add up. It gets really exciting when you see this number, but then these numbers go up as well, which offsets everything. All right, then we have our home insurance, which rarely ever changes, is 48.43. We have our van insurance which is 17107. We have the car insurance that is 661. And then we have our RESP as I mentioned earlier. That is 11698. And we have the two Netflix accounts, so I write them separately. So this first Netflix is $9.99, and that's my mom's. And then this second Netflix is ours, and it is $18.99. Then we also have our Crave subscription. That is $29.35. We have Disney Plus. That is $8.99. And we have our Microsoft. And that is $12.43. All right. Um, that is it for the fixed expenses. So I'm going to go ahead and add all of these up and put the total right here. So let's go ahead and add this. All right, so the total we have for our fixed expenses is $4,640.30. So not too bad. All right, now that's it for the fixed expenses. Now we move over to the variables. So first I start with our cell phones. Now remember, I have mentioned before, so the cell phones I pay $450, that is for four cell phones and our home um, security. So it's mine, my husband, and my son's phone, my dad's phone, which my mom pays for um, in this $60, and then our home security. So cell phones, and then we have our internet bill, which is $110. Then we have gymnastics, which I put $200. I did bump it up because I'm not sure if we will be going back to in-person gymnastics in April at all. So just in case, I did add extra money there. And then we have dance, which I also bumped up to $300. Um, because we are going back to in person, but I'm not exactly sure how much it will go up. We have our Amazon subscriptions, which is approximately $40. Then we have our bank fees, which is usually around $35. All right, let me make sure I haven't missed anything. All right, so that's it for the, the usual, let's say, the, the bills that are considered variable. Now we get into the other. So we have our groceries. And I'm going to go ahead right off the bat and budget $1,000 because this worked out really well for us in March. Um, and even though I don't think we spent it all yet, um, we're still in the month of March. But um, it's working really well. And I have been making a ridiculously conscious effort 
to eat at home more, especially if you saw my previous budget. Going to Tim Hortons for breakfast every morning has substantially slowed down. Um, so we're not going to Tim Hortons nearly as often. I think this week we've been once, so it's definitely changing the game. So upping the grocery bill or actually leaving it to a thousand is going to help. That way we have enough money for groceries. Then for gas, and this is for gas for our cars, I am going to budget 600 even though um, one whole week of April we're not going anywhere. There's no work. We have our spring break, which was moved from March. Um, so we'll be doing less driving, but I just I want to keep that there just in case. Then we have restaurants, which we always blow this budget. Um, but I'm hoping that now, since we're eating at home more, we won't. So I'm going to leave it at $400 and see how that goes. For other, I'm going to go ahead and budget $400. And I don't have any major events going on in the month of April. I don't really have any birthdays or anything that I have to purchase for. However, I did talk about my daughter... Um, I signed her up for those semi-private dance lessons, so that would hopefully come out of that. And then maybe just some random spending um, I could use that for. So we'll just budget that and make sure and keep track. Now, I do want to add my rollover. And this rollover is the money that I keep aside to help pay for rent, utilities, and groceries and gas, those things, for the first few days in the following month until I get my first paycheck that month. So this rollover will help pay rent for May, utilities for May, groceries and gas for the first few days of May until I get my first paycheck for May. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and budget 2000 five hundred dollars and that usually is um, quite sufficient now what I want to do is I want to add all of this up and then add it to this see what's left from this estimated budget and then that will help us with our sinking funds and our um, savings challenge so let's go ahead and add this All right, so this total we have right now is 6,035. I'm going to add it to this, which is plus 46.40 and 30 cents. So that gives us $10,675 and 30 cents. Now I'm going to subtract that from $11,760. So we're left with 1,084 and 70 cents. So that means in a perfect world, if my budget were perfect, I would have my savings, challenges, and my sinking funds. So savings challenges, I will put about $300. And then sinking funds, I will put the rest. I will put $780. All right, now I do have unbudgeted that I do track, but obviously being unbudgeted, I don't budget for it. So I do leave it as a zero. So that means I need to add this column up again to get the total variables. And then I will just add everything up, make sure it adds up properly that I haven't made any mistakes. And that will be the budget for April. So let's just check. All right, so the total for the variables is 7,115 dollars. So I'm gonna add that to this, so plus four, six, 40 and 30 cents. That brings us to 11, 755, 30, which is perfect because that leaves us with potential savings four dollars and seventy cents which is not savings it's just that's as close as we can make it a zero based budget so there we go let me zoom you out so you can see the whole picture all right so there you go you see the entire budget now you have your estimated income at the top fixed expenses listed here with the total 
um, variable expenses listed here with the total. And yeah, it looks pretty promising for the month of April. So I'm super excited. I think this will be a good month and I'm looking forward to it. So have you set up your April budget yet? I would love to know. Make sure you leave it in the comment section down below as well if you have any comments or questions or anything that I can help you with. Feel free to leave them in the comment section and I will definitely chat with you. All right. So that is everything for me. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much everyone.